of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God I will shout hey
seated in the cloud of glory and power. clouds of glory and power. Behold, O oh Lord, I am the Lord, seated in the cloud of glory and power. Shields, take up your 
sword and defending the kingdom, the kingdom of our God. Oh, sleeping giants, wake up! Take up your shields and sword, defending the kingdom, the kingdom of our God. So sleeping. Giants wake up. That is the word for you. Sleeping giants wake up. Defending the kingdom. The kingdom of our God in this season. Sleeping giants wake up. If you're sleeping, wake up. Defending the kingdom. Wake up, pick up shields and sword. We are going for war, defending the kingdom, the kingdom of God. When you hear the sound of the shofar, sleeping chains, wake up, pick up your shields, pick up your swords, defending the kingdom, the kingdom of is a season sleeping giants wake up it's a season sleeping giants wake up it's your season sleeping giants wake up defending the kingdom of our god it's the season sleeping giants wake up it's the season sleeping giants wake up it's our season sleeping giants wake up Kingdom of our God, it's your season, sleeping days. Wake up, Gile Becosa, Gile Beboro Vigo Sabayande, Casibele Mabo Colobo. Defending the kingdom of our God, it's your season, sleeping days. Wake up, it is your season, sleeping days. Wake up. It's your season, sleeping giants. Wake up, defending the kingdom of our God. Sleeping giants, wake up. Sleeping giants, wake up. Sleeping giants, wake up. And defend the kingdom of our God. Behold. The shofar sound calling the remnant, the remnant of our God. Behold the shofar sound calling the remnant, the remnant. Over God, sleeping giants, wake up, take up shields and swords, and defend our kingdom, the kingdom of our God. For it's your season, sleeping giants, wake up. It's the season, sleeping giants. Wake up, pick up shields and sword. Defend the kingdom of our God. Listen, it's the season, sleeping giants. Wake up, it's our season, sleeping giants. Wake up, defending the kingdom of our God. One more time. It's your season, sleeping giants. Wake up. It's your season, sleeping giants. Wake up. Defending the kingdom. The kingdom of our God.
the ball of anointing that just hits this room right now by those statements that are made what I saw in the spirit something just broke and I saw angels stepping into the rooms of people you need to understand that spiritual activity is born out of understanding and when you use understanding to carry out spiritual activity testimonies are inevitable the ball of anointing that just hits this room right now by those statements that are made what I saw in the spirit something just broke and I saw angels stepping into the rooms of people you need to understand that spiritual activity is born out of understanding and when you use understanding to carry out spiritual activity testimonies are inevitable the ball of anointing that just hits this room right now by those statements that are made what i shalom wonderful people of god it's another wednesday morning and you know wednesday morning means breakthrough morning devotion with god's choice servant pastor obedo being a day week in week out we come your way with verities from the word of god with truths baked fresh from the ovens of heaven serving you hot bread on wednesday mornings to propel you for the week ahead to propel you as you live that victorious life in christ jesus to ensure that as you take steps to mark your victory in christ your fruits show they are bound and they tell even in the life that you live we come your way with another transmission of Breakthrough Morning Devotion and from the studios of Cosmopolitan TV, I bring you greetings and say shalom. Now, wherever you are, whatever device you are watching us on, whether you are watching us on your mobile phone, on a tablet, on a PC, on TV, what we want you to do is to extend the hand of invitation to another so that that person too might be a part of what we are doing here. You are watching on Facebook. We want you to create a watch party. We want you to share the link to the stream. You are watching on YouTube. We want you to do the same. Copy the links to the streams and share it across all your social media platforms. Reach out. Let that hand of invitation be stretched out and let everyone know that we are live with Breakthrough Morning Devotion with God's Choice Servant, Pastor Obed Obeyade. And today promises to be a riveting experience in the Word of God. Today promises to be an experience where we receive instructions and are led even as He holds our hand in Christ Jesus. You want to pick up your phone, call a friend, call a loved one, Call that special person you probably just met yesterday. Let that person know that we are live with Breakthrough Morning Devotion and his or her blessing awaits even as he joins the live stream. You want to be very active as the stream goes on. You're watching on Facebook. We want to see your comments. We want to see your likes. You're watching on YouTube. We want to see your comments and active participation. We want to see you liking the stream. And I emphasize again, share the links to the streams. Share it, share it, share it, share it. If you do not share the link, you are not doing well. You want to share the links to the streams. You want to make that call. You want to invite that special person to today's transmission. And I know your life will never be the same again. I know even as you stretch that hand to invite someone as an evangelist, your blessing is also double fold. We are in a new month and 
I read the article for the shofar. Now, like I always say, always the numbers that are displayed on your screen have contact by which you could order the shofar or order any of the written manuscripts of the man of God. So every book that the man of God has written, every shofar edition is available both online and also in our physical bookstore. So if you are not in Ghana, you are outside the country and you want a copy of the shofar, you could have it as an e-copy or even as a hard copy delivered to wherever you are. Just pick up the numbers that are always displayed on your screen, send a WhatsApp message, call in, visit our website www.christcosmopolitan.org slash CCI Online Bookstore and you can have all the books, all the written manuscripts of the man of God and even more. Check out the CCI Online Bookstore at every single time and place your orders. I read today's article caption, The Art of Fellowship. The Art of Fellowship. I read, But among you, the one who serves you best will be your leader. Out in the world, the master sits at the table and is served by his servants, but not here. For I am your servant, nevertheless, because you have stood true to me in these terrible days, and because my father has granted me a kingdom, I, here and now, grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in that kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is a script from Luke 22, 26 to 30 in the Living Bible. I take it again. But among you, the one who serves you best will be your leader. Out in the world, the master sits at the table and is served by his servants, but not here. For I am your servant. Nevertheless, because you have stood true to me in these terrible days, and because my father has granted me a kingdom, I, here and now, grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in that kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Luke 22, 26 to 30. Many people seek to be leaders but very few seek to be followers. In, my, in any establishment, however, the way to the top begins from the bottom. Never has a great leader appeared out of the blue without first being a follower. When God placed a full-grown man in the Garden of Eden, that man blew it and made a total mess of himself. Hence, the next time God brought another man, Jesus, onto the scene, he placed him on the earth as a baby. Isaiah 9, 6 says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. As a child, the Lord Jesus was raised, and the Bible says he grew up in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This can be seen in Luke 2 verse 52. Followership is what makes people because it is by means of followership that people are raised to themselves be leaders. Thus, Jesus told his disciples, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. This is Mark 1, 17. Before he could make them fishers of men, they first had to follow him so that he could raise them to be as himself. There are several meanings to the word follow. As used in the Bible, one word translated follow is duty, which is seen in Matthew 4, 19. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. It means to go after someone because you were bid to come. The next is Akolotheo, which is found in Matthew 4, 20. And they, Peter and Andrew, straight away left their nets and followed him. This type of following entails discipleship as well as working as an attendant to the master. The third word is Mimiomai and is the word from mimic. It's obtained in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 7. At this level, the disciple imitates the master. The apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, that be imitators of me as I am of Christ. This is in the ESV. The way to follow Christ is to follow a man who follows Christ. I repeat, the way to follow Christ is to follow a man who follows Christ. How then can you follow? The apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4, 15 to 16, that for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. The one you follow must be a father and not an instructor. The one you follow must be a father and not an instructor. This is because a father has the ability to raise you after himself and form something after the patterns of Christ in you. 
Father's come into form in you. Father's coming to form in you the Christ that has been planted in you as a seed. Paul was a father, and so he said concerning the believers in Christ, My little children, of whom I travel in birth again until God be formed in you. This is in Galatians 4.19. Additionally, the follower must be loyal and faithful to his father or master. This is what causes a man to access all that his father is and will be. People are not appointed into leadership because they are great orators, but rather because they have the heart set of their father. The foundation to every ministry is followership and faithfulness. Beloved of God, your life can only be shaped into a glorious one by following a man who follows Christ. Gaining great heights in God happens only by means of following a man who follows Christ. Walk in this reality. Shalom. And take this confession with me. I am a born slave. I love my master. I am a born slave. I love my master. I serve him and I follow him faithfully in Jesus' name. Now let's take the first prayer point. Great judge, embed in my spirit man the heart set of my father in the Lord. Great judge, embed in my spirit man the heart set of my father in the Lord. Pray with me. Gida Shoda, Priga Sandes. Kesaneme Raguja Katia Davarandes. Prika Talagasa, Mandi Katusa. Rekosh Enevaye Anti Paragesh Kadua Divaza. Plengra de Gasika, Sumaraye. Afarani Manamasha Kantashaye Kapadas. Great Judge, embed in my heart the heart set of my Father in the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Ko Safradesh, Kaparages, Akasani Manasha, Minka Sona Vekeshaya, in the name of Jesus, Ko Safradesh, Mayankis Katala Gavara Gadaja, Mamayandes Kradosh Paya Gadasande, Fafasina Minalengros, O Kapasia, Fandi Fanga Shande, Bahayes Kanua, Radi Gadiza, Falarangush Kapriya Kasa, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Ko Sashinaminga, Koralumandesh Kaparades, Ukaradesh, Mayande, Varaga Dashanda Bagabaya. In the name of the Lord Jesus, say with me, teach me to imitate him, even as he imitates Christ, in the great name of Jesus. Teach me to imitate him, even as he imitates Christ, in the great name of Jesus. Pray with me, Krosh Atiyatala, Rakse Nimanegas Afayana Marandesh Katua, Re Pasekredesh, Maranga Shanda Baya, Embed in my heart, great judge, the heart set of my father in the Lord, and teach me to imitate him, even as he imitates Christ Jesus. Cruz Paria, Lianga Shadi Barades, Rakosa Miangre de Feshe Karua Casale, Prapa Papaina, Miane Menemenkos Kena Makataye, Pram Papa Kalishes, Fradus Marigesh, Adia Dua Dinga, Kakanima, Marane Mekeseye, Rante Kus Akalara, Prangish Katafaye, Mama Mandis Katapaye, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's take the second prayer topic, Rock of Ages. Strengthen my spirit and soul to follow faithfully and diligently my Father in the Lord, for as long as you will have me too, in the faithful name of Jesus. Rock of Ages. Strengthen my spirit and soul to follow faithfully and diligently my Father in the Lord for as long as you'll have me to. In the faithful name of Jesus. Say with me, Master Ruler, enable me to accomplish all that I accomplish. Master Ruler, enable me to accomplish all that I ought to accomplish on this earth, even as I follow and serve my master in the accomplishing name of Jesus. Pray with me. Kradesh Pariagas Alakasha Kamaya Mina Melengro de Shinda Gandajaya Pragosa Neverenge de Shende Bangazua Una Mele Kradesh Mayita Kasandes Orakosha Perenge de Shende Baraga Dashae Prapa Fakasina Milankro de Shae In the name of Jesus, diligent followership in the name of the Lord Jesus, faithful followership in the name of the Lord Jesus, Kosa Prendesh, Akashani, Mayatia, Ianeme, Marande Sonde. 
Prenge descende by the fire. Empower my spirit. Empower my soul to follow diligently in the name of the Lord Jesus. The, you need to pray this prayer because it is one thing to follow and it is another thing to follow diligently and faithfully. Because Jesus speaks of the rewards for the various kinds of followership. And we see those who were given charge over cities, 10 cities, people who were given charge over multiple things because they followed diligently and faithfully. You need to constantly make this prayer a part of your life. So that is one thing to follow. But to follow with heart and soul, diligently and faithfully, is what will mark you out as a kingdom giant. God bless you for praying with us. The man of God is in the studios. We are coming your way with the good word of God. The spirit. Something just broke. And I saw angels stepping into the rooms of people. You need to understand that spiritual activity is born out of understanding. And when you use understanding to carry out spiritual activity, testimonies are inevitable. anointing that just hits this room right now by those statements that are made and what I saw in the spirit something just broke and I saw angels stepping into the rooms of people You need to understand that spiritual activity is born out of understanding. And when you use understanding, <laughs> Father, we give you glory. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Bless your name in the name of Jesus. We honor you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the gift of today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. We honor you, O oh God. Yes. Our hearts yearn for you. Yes. To see the beauty and to behold the glory of your power, yes. even in the sanctuary. Father, we thank you. We ask that even this morning, you bless our hearts the more. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for our viewers. Thank you for everybody who is tuning in. Let their homes and their dwelling places and their habitations, oh God, be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Even beyond measure, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Grant that I, your servant, will speak even the mystery. According as you have willed it, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. You're welcome to Breakthrough Morning Devotion. It's a wonderful Wednesday morning and I strongly believe that you are set for what God has to say in the matters of what we started with last week. We were dealing with the untold dimensions yes. of prayer yes, Papa. and we were touching on the Neshama yes, Papa. and today we want to continue. We would just advance a little and I'm hoping that by next week I should bring this whole chapter to a close, if God would have us. 
we understood that by the scriptures, man is not tripartite. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true that we can see the physical body. We can also see the reasoning faculty. We could see the soul in expression. And we know the essential being who is the spirit being. But then there is a dimension of man that is the neshama. We know that there is the body, there is the nefesh, there is the ruach, and there is the neshama. The neshama is what distincts man from the entirety of creation. It is what God shares with man and man only, the neshama. It is what God holds in common with man. The ruach is in animals. The angels have ruach. But there is a spirit in man. It is the inspiration. It is the neshama of the Almighty that gives him understanding. Everything we see in creation has a tripartite function. But man has a quapartite function. That is to say that there are four aspects of man and not three. We have established that already last week. Yes, Papa. Now, we want to go further into the issues of the Neshama. And then afterwards, we will move into the dimensions of what to do with the Neshama. Now, we know that the Neshama is the contact point where we go into the mountains of God's presence. That is where the flight is. That is where we are able to experience the very heights of the mountains of God's habitation. Mm -hmm. And this we know in the book of Psalms, where David speaks of he going into the mountains of God, flying into the heights of his glorious presence. Now, from that angle, we want to get back slowly and pick it up from here. Let us read the book of Job, the chapter 27, and the verse number 3. Job 27, 3. Yes. All the while, my breath is in me. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. All right. So, all this while, saith the scriptures, the Neshema is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Okay. Interestingly, there is a connect of the Spirit and the Neshema. Mm. The Neshema is rather deeply seated, please get this, within you, and it is the substructure. The spirit is a form, and the neshema is behind. For most people, they think that the deepest and the inmost part of our being is the spirit. No. The inmost part of your being is the neshema. If you are able to reach out to the Neshema, mm. you would have to cross your spirit to reach the Neshema. So all the while, the Neshema is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. Let us take further scriptures to prove what we are saying. Yes, sir. The chapter 34, the verse number 12. Job 34, 12. Yes. Yea, surely, God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. Mm -hmm. Who hath given him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world? If he sets his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself mm. his spirit and, and his breath. Now, watch this. So, there were two things mm. that God That's spirited it. or released mm. to all flesh. And this time we are talking about humankind. Okay. Not all flesh in terms of fish and animals. When God sets his heart upon man, 
he gathers unto himself his spirit and his neshema. So we see the ruach, he gathered unto himself his ruach uh -huh. and his neshama. And his neshama. Now hear this. <laughs> At the hospital, there is what is referred to as brain dead. Please get this. The drawing away of the spirit from the body is the beginning of death. Okay. The moment the neshema breaks, the silver cord breaks instantly. The spirit of a man, please get this. When you sleep, your spirit can go out of your body, but the neshema doesn't go out of your body. When the neshama leaves, the body ceases to be. This is the reason why you can dream your spirit goes out of your body. Not just your soul. There is a departure of the soul from the body, which is the mere realm of dreaming. Then when you dream that you are dreaming, the soul is gone, the spirit is gone. But the moment the Neshema leaves, you will not be dreaming again. So what is the difference mm. between sleep and death? Mm. Sleep and death, the difference is that the spirit can depart in sleep. The soul can depart in sleep. But the Neshema never departs. The moment the Neshema leaves, that's death. That's death. So, Death simply means Neshema is absent. That is for humankind. For humankind. Okay. But then, when you sleep, your spirit can go out of your body. Now, many think that the silver cord is the only thing that exists. If you remember, when I was in the US, I was teaching us concerning the various cords that hold the body. And I spoke of the golden cord. Now, the silver cord ties the soul and the spirit to the body. But the golden cord ties the body, the soul, the spirit to the neshema. Please understand what's happening. The moment the silver cord breaks. The golden cord takes over, tying the spirit and the neshema together. Now, when a person leaves his body, he still has a body called the spirit of the neshema. Your neshema wears a body called spirit. Your spirit wears a body called soul and body. Please take time, listen slowly, play this message over. I'm saying the untold dimensions of prayer. I am talking about things in prayer that have not been penned down. You will not read it anywhere in the world. There is no writing on prayer that I'm speaking of today. Papa, please, let's, let, let me see whether we are on the same page. Now, foundationally. Foundationally. From Genesis. Yes. When he's speaking about the formation of God. Of yes. Man, yes. He breathed into man the yes. breath of life. The breath of so life. The neshama of life. Yes. So that's the foundation. Foundation is the root of man. The root the of man. The neshama is your root. Okay. So, as a, so far as you are a man and you are humankind, yes. the, el, the basic element of your nature is the neshama. The neshama. Which, that is the foundation of humankind. Okay. Now, that neshama, yes. in its expression, uh -huh. is where the ruach comes in. That is now, the spirit. So, the neshama is covered by the ruach. Okay. The ruach is covered by the nefesh. Okay. And the nefesh is covered by the clay, the body. So this is what God did. God breathed into his nostrils the neshema. Yes. And the man now resonated, animated, mm. became a living soul. A 
he nefesh. Yes. Okay. So now, the nefesh mm. has to do with what you have claimed to manifest here on earth. That's for another time. I'm not dealing with the nefesh. Okay. Otherwise, we will we'll just <laughs> move on. Yes. The root of the matter today is on two dimensions of prayer. But before we come to deal with that dimension of prayer, we must know the aspects of our being okay. and how to engage. You have heard many preachers talk about how to engage your spirit in prayer. But I have never, no man ever spoke on the aspect of engaging the Neshema. I'm talking about modern materials. I'm talking about, so listen, listen, listen. I'm not saying there is no scripture for it. It is written in the word. But it has not been spoken of. But hear this. Let's put that aside. Whether it's been spoken of or not. Yeah, let's deal with this. That's why we are speaking about it. Now listen. Everybody must know how the Neshama operates. Don't forget this. What you share in common with God as a humankind is the Neshema. So the spirit, God is spirit. Get this. It is the beginning of introducing a man into the realm of God, spirit. Jesus looked at the woman and said, God is spirit. They that worship must worship in spirit. Now, why didn't he end there by saying in spirit? But he said in spirit and in truth. In <laughs> truth, Alethea speaks about the foundation. The Good. Base. The base. Wow. So Jesus was not saying we should only worship in spirit. For many have spoken about their spiritual worship. God is not just spirit. And must be contacted by spirit. But beyond the spirit, there is a root. It is the Neshema. But the hour cometh and now is. True worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and, in, and truth. in truth. For the Father seeketh such, such to, to worship, worship him. There is one thing we share with God. I'm saying again, 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 again. We share the Neshema. And the Ruach with God. Hmm. Now, just to sc scrap the surface, hmm. why was the Holy Spirit given to us hmm. in earnest? Hmm. Now, why did Peter speak of the recovery hmm. of the breath? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Jesus. He said... So that your sins will be forgiven. And that we will be able to recover the breath. In the experience of a new man. It was not only the renewing of the spirit that was granted. But also the recovery of the breath. The anabzuzis. The recovery of the breath. Please get this. Until you walk yourself into that dimension of prayer, you are dealing with God, but you have not gone to the depths of his reality because that is the reality of truth. In that realm, there is no argument. In that realm, there are no sides. There is no duality in that realm. It is the realm of singularity. In that realm, we are not dealing with correctedness. We are dealing with connectedness. Jesus. We are not dealing with who is right and who is wrong. Because in that realm, when you walk there, there is no wrong. Wrong and right is in the realm of the soul. Where a man is using his mind to understand things and to interpret things according to the illusion that comes to him. So, you are speaking of perspectives. That is the reason why in that realm we have denominations. That is why in that realm we have churches of various emphasis and kinds. But in the realm of the Neshema, which is the foundation of all reality, we only know one thing, truth. 
And that truth can never divide us. That truth does not segregate. We are not divided. We are all connected to that true being of reality, the truth. For truth is reality. And it is the root of all things, the Aletheia. Please get this. The Bible speaks of the times of refreshing. Let's go read it. That it may come from the presence of God. What does it mean, times of refreshing? It says, repent ye therefore, Acts uh-huh. 3, 19, and be converted, uh-huh. that your sins may be blotted out. Uh-huh. When the times of refreshing mm-hmm. shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, when you read the word, when the times of refreshing, please get this. The word refreshing is the anabzuzis, the recovery of breath. So he says, a cooling, a refreshing. Properly, a recovery of breath. Mm. 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 Jesus. Please. When a man, Jehovah, listen. When a man comes into Christ, he has to understand the Holy Ghost that was given to him. And he also has to understand that he has come into the Kairos season of the recovery of breath. The anabzuxis from the presence of the Lord. That will lead us next week into understanding what Jesus meant when he said, give us this day our daily bread. For many things that when he said, give us this day our daily bread, he was talking about our cars and shoes. No, 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 no. The daily bread is the Holy Ghost. We'll deal with that next week. The Lord's prayer, give us this day our daily bread. He was not talking about rice and gobe on your table. <laughs> he was speaking about the Holy Ghost. Now, let me just brush. I'll come back into it proper. You remember Jesus said something. He said, how many of you being evil that when your children ask you for bread, you don't give them scorpions. When they ask you for egg, you don't give them snakes. Then in that vein, he spoke of we asking God. He said then, how much more your heavenly father? Hear what he said. He said, for he will give his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Can we read that quickly? The book of Luke. So, Luke eleven thirteen. Yes. If ye then, being evil, mm-hmm. know how to give good gifts unto your children, mm-hmm. how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit mm. to them that ask him? Please, let's start from the top so you understand what Jesus was saying. So, the book 10, of Luke. Luke yes. Luke eleven ten. Yes. The book For of everyone Luke. that seeketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. Okay. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. <laughs> 11. <laughs> if a son shall... Start ask, from verse 9, so that people okay. can get it well. And I say unto you, mm-hmm. ask, and it shall be given you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Seek, and ye shall find. Uh-huh. Knock, and it shall be opened unto For? you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And? He that seeketh, uh-huh. findeth. And? And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Hold on. Last week... Sunday, I was teaching in church. Many think that when Jesus said, ask, <laughs> seek, and knock, it means that when you ask and you are not getting it, then what do you do? <laughs> you then you seek. When you seek and you are not getting you it, knock. then what? You knock. So the very same thing. Assuming you're asking God for a car. So if you are not getting it, then now you start seeking the car. If you are not seek, if you are seeking and you are not finding it, then now you start knocking for the car. Oh, mercy. Please, there is what you ask, there is what you seek, there is what you knock. We ask for things. We seek for the king. We seek for the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God mm-hmm. and his righteousness. We knock into the realms mm-hmm. of God. We ask for things. We seek for the kingdom. We knock into the depths and the realms of God. Then, if you get that completely, then now you begin to appreciate what Jesus was saying. Luke 11. Now, so you've understood. Ask, you shall receive. Seek the kingdom. Ask for things, you will receive. Seek the kingdom, you will find. Knock into the realms of God and it shall be open, open unto you. you. Now look at verse 11. 
So 11 says, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, uh -huh. will he give him a stone? Uh -huh. Or if he ask a fish, uh -huh. will he for a fish give him a serpent? Uh -huh. 12. Or if he shall ask an egg, uh -huh. will he offer him a scorpion? Uh -huh. If you then, if ye then, uh -huh. being evil, uh -huh. know how to give good gifts unto your children, uh -huh. how much more? Shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit <laughs> to them that ask Him? How much more? Mm. You you know how to give good gifts to your children. Yeah. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy mm. Spirit to them that mm. ask Him? Please, when you read from the top, the subject matter was on the Holy Spirit. Mm. The subject matter so, was on what you should ask, ask for, the things you should ask for. Now. What is the highest realm that God will ever give anybody when it comes to your daily bread? The anabzuzis. The recovery of the bread. That is your daily bread. Mm. Next week, I'll take my time. I just wanted you to see this. That when Jesus was saying, ask, seek, and knock, he was talking about the realms of the Holy Ghost. He was not talking about the things that have to do with um, houses and, um, and promotions and all of that. That is the beginning stage. And really, that is not the daily bread. Please listen. Quickly. When Jesus spoke of daily bread, Fifi, Papa. the disciples were listening to Jesus in the experience of the wilderness when they were receiving manna. Please don't forget that. He was not talking about giving you rice and cassava and gari every morning. When he said, now watch this. Look at the Lord's prayer. After this man I pray, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Hold on. Did you see kingdom? Did you see kingdom? Yes. Hallowed be your name. We'll deal with that pretty soon. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Next one. Give us uh -huh. Do you see what we are? We are dealing with matters of the kingdom. We are not dealing with God. We are not dealing with one dollar, two dollar. Oh, man. Not even a million dollars. No, no, no. That's not what we are dealing wow. with. And he said, now hear this. When, when you read the book of Luke, he said, when you pray, say. Now, when you read the book of Matthew, he said, after this manner, pray. pray. <laughs> what is the saying and what is the manner? Jesus. You need to understand the manner and the saying of the Lord's prayer. Yes, there's nothing wrong with saying, Our Father, we pray that always. Mm. What in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth. Uh, that's good. But let's understand the import. What were Jesus' audience? What were they hearing? When he said, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Instantly, they knew that he was talking about the realm of Moses and Joshua entering into the clouds and leaving the 70 elders behind. Please get this. Next week, we'll deal with that better. Let's go back. Let's go and deal with the foundations. I need you to set it on the foundation before we start flying into this realm. The Neshema. I'm saying over and over again that there is one thing God shares with humanity. The Neshema and the Ruach. The jacket of the Neshema is the Ruach. The inmost part of the spirit is the Neshema. The outmost part of the Neshema is the Ruach. So as I'm here right now, this my body and this my dress. This is my outward parts. But my body is within the inward parts of this dress. So this body has its outward part as the dress. And this dress has the inward parts as my body. Mm -hmm. That is how the Neshema and the Ruach, the spirit, and the Neshema, that's how they relate. The breath is within and the spirit is in the nostrils. The moment the spirit walks out and the breath walks out, man dies. Ended. 
Now, I just want you to see something pretty quickly. Shall we go to Psalm 11? The verse 1 and the verse 5. Psalm 11. Now hear what David said. I spoke of flying into the mountains of his abode. Psalm 11, the verse 1 and the verse 5. In the Lord put I my trust. Read for me. How say ye to my soul? How? How? How would that be possible? <laughs> How say ye to my soul? Flee as a bed to your mountain. Now, do you know what? Do you know why he says that? We'll go and read the verse 5. Now hear this. The word, the neshema. Last week I told you, it is noon, shin, mem, and hey. All right. So now, in between the neshema is shem. When you take shem out, you are left with what? The noon, the mem, and the hay. Okay, no, you are left with the noon, noon and, and the then hay. the hay. Yes. Now, you have taken the, sh uh, the shin and the mem, mem out. Shem. Yes. Now, in Hebrew, there is a play of words that creates meaning. Okay. When you take a word out and you leave two other words, those two words must make a meaning. Okay. Now, the word ego is naser. Okay. Now, Within the Neshema, we are able, get this, to understand how the ego comes about. Okay. How is this possible? The Mem, which is the multitude of humanity, mm. <laughs> the waters of humanity, mm. the moment you take the Mem out, mm. you are left with Noon, Shin, and He. And he. Now, when all of this is headed in manifestation, you fly above. The highest flight is the nacelle, the eagle. In the wilderness, Moses was referred to as the eagle. Who is the eagle of humanity? Anybody who is above people, a manager, a president, a leader, is referred to as their eagle. So, in the scriptures, an eagle is a leader of a people. So, he said, I bore you on eagle's wings. When you read the revelation of Jesus, he speaks of how that he gave them wings to fly into the wilderness to a place where it was prepared that she should be fed ten times and half a time. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Now, you see, if you don't understand the Hebrew context, you are not getting what he's saying here. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. That is to say, a leader emerged from the woman. A remnant seed that was supposed to be a covering. So, the woman were, were given, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. That she might fly into the wilderness, uh -huh. into her place, uh -huh. where she is nourished for a time, uh -huh. and times, and half a time. And this was speaking in type of who Moses was when he led them through the wilderness. Exodus 9 verse 4, 19 verse 4. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. For by a prophet, Israel was delivered. And by a prophet, they were also preserved. It was by the wings of an eagle. Who is the eagle? So now, David is saying in Psalm 11, the verse 1 and the verse 5. How say you to my soul? Fly. I said, flee as a bed. Flee as a bed to your mountain. How would that come to pass? How would that be? Now, verse 5. Verse 5. The Lord trieth the righteous, mm. but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Now, do you realize that God has a soul? 
In verse 5. Mm -hmm. The Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, yes. God's soul hates. How say ye that the soul should fly to his mountain? The soul of man, the soul of God, can only come into contact. Now, what is the soul? The seat of the mind. So the Bible says, come, let us reason together. We're going somewhere. Come, let us reason together. That you may have this mind within you, it will only be possible if your soul can fly to meet the soul of God in his mountain. Jacob said, we will worship in this mountain. No. For this is not his mountain. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is the highest mountain of God. We must fly to his mountain. Where our soul and his soul meets. How will you be able to have contact with the soul of God? In the soul is his mind. His mind is in the scriptures. But the scriptures, by their inking, you are able to see the soul. But there is the root of the words as penned down, which is the Neshema. For no portion of scripture came without the Neshema. For all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So the scripting, which is the soul of God, came by the Neshema of God. If you use your mind, it will be foolishness to you. So for you to be able to contact spirits, for they are spiritually designed. And it is the realm where spiritual men interpret spiritual, spiritual things. things. Please get this. This is why we have confusion. Because many fly with their souls into the mountain of God without their spirit and without the Neshema. And in that realm, when God begins to speak to you according to his divine intelligence, your mind cannot phantom. But there is a realm where your soul and God's soul can meet. That can only be possible if all things are aligned. The Neshama of God meets your Neshama. The Ruach meets your spirit Ruach. Then your Nefesh can meet God's Nefesh. Else, my friend, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. How do you reason with a man whose thoughts are higher than your thoughts? Yet he says, come. Let us reason together. Fly to the mountains of God. Now, David said, how? How would this be possible? It would only be possible if you do something that David did. Come with me to Psalm 63. Glory to God. Psalm 63. <laughs> From the verse 1 to the verse 6. A psalm of David yes. when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Uh huh. Oh God. Oh God. Thou art my God. Thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Uh -huh. My soul tested for thee. Wait. How say ye to my soul? Fly to his mountain. Jesus. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee, my flesh longed for thee in the dry and thirsty land where no water is. is. Uh -huh. to, to see thy power and thy glory. Uh -huh. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Yes, verse because, 6. Verse 6. Yes. 
When I remember thee upon my bed. Jesus. And meditate on thee in the night watches. Please get this. There is a place that is deep introspection. Contemplative realm where you are on your bed and you are meditating on him in the night watches. How do you do this? Whilst you are lying on your bed. Because the breath is the Neshema. And the believers have been told Jesus. that meditation and the use of their breath is Eastern religion yeah. and has got nothing to do with Christianity. And many Christians for all their lifetime have never, you see what? Please, let me just be sincere. Well, please be sincere. Please listen, very sincere. I'm just going to be blatantly sincere. The charismatic wave introduced the Holy Ghost but never introduce the Neshema. There is the wave of God beyond the charismatic wave. All the charismatic wave brought was a renewal, charismatic renewal of the emphasis of the Holy Spirit. Please get this. To contact the realm of spirit is not to deal with the roots of God. The depths of reality is in the Neshema. That is where Shem, Hashem, leaves. It is his highest order. And the only means by which a man is even introduced into the Holy Ghost, as taught by Jesus, he appeared in their midst and he breathed upon them. And hear what he said. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. It was the beginning. It was the infantile stages. Jesus knew the power of the breath. Jesus was a breatharian. He appeared in their midst. Have you wondered why Fifi, the disciples went to Jesus. Jesus was praying. Listen, Jesus was praying. And when he was done, the Bible said the disciples went to him and said, Master, teach us how to pray. These were already in the Judaic faith. That tells you that Jesus was not doing it like the way they were doing it. Master, teach us how to pray. Ask John, taught his disciples how to pray. What does it mean? It means that number one, the way they used to pray in their synagogues was one thing. Number two, the way John taught his disciples to pray was another thing. Now they come to Jesus. Master, teach us how to pray. Question is, how was Jesus praying? Because obviously they were seeing something about Jesus they had not seen with their leaders of the synagogue and with John. <laughs> so, what do you do to get the results you are getting? Jesus showed us the character of prayer. Look at this. Mark chapter 1. The verse 35. <laughs> Mark 1 35. <laughs> and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, mm. he went out. He went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Mm -hmm. And Simon and they that were with him mm -hmm. followed after him. Mm -hmm. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. <laughs> And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, for therefore come I forth. Okay. Back to 35. And in the morning. And in the morning. Rising up a great while before mm. day, mm. he went out and, and departed into a solitary place. Mm -hmm. and there prayed. He went into a solitary place. And there he prayed. Do you remember what he taught his disciples? Mm. That they shouldn't be like the Pharisees. Mm. Making noise and engaging vain repetitions. Rising up a great while before, before day, day, 
He went out, departed into a solitary place. He went into solitude and there he prayed. What was Jesus doing in solitude? I have Apostle Paul to help us in the book of Ephesians. Let's go see it. Too much scriptures to emphasize what I want mm -hmm. to say. The but it's important. They are begging. Ephesians 3, the verse 20. Ephesians 3, 20. Mm. And to him. Mm. Who is able mm. above mm. all things mm. to do exceeding abundantly mm -hmm. what we ask or think? Hold on. God does not only do what you ask, He also does beyond what you think. There is an asking prayer and there is the thinking prayer. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Do you make time to think? Or for you, prayer is always asking. Do you know that it is impossible for any man to know the depths of God always asking? He is going to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. Thinking prayers. What was he doing when he went into solitude? Ask or think. That's not enough. Let me take you to the book of Ephesians again. So we are dealing with what Apostle Paul is teaching us. Ephesians chapter 5. Jesus. I want us to read verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms. Mm and hymns, mm. and spiritual songs, mm. singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Please take the last part. Making what? Melody in your heart to the Lord. Say it again. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. Say it again. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. So he said, speaking to yourself. Mm. Fifi, Papa. how do you speak to yourself? Not obviously. When you, you are vocal about it, it means you are addressing an external thing. You got it. How do you speak to yourself? Speak within. In your thoughts. In your thoughts. Mm. I'm going to do this today. That's how we speak to ourselves. Mm. Everybody, mm. when you wake up mm. and you are thinking, mm. thinking is the way by which you speak to yourself. So now, see how he says it in the book of Colossians. The chapter 3, the verse 16. Finally, brethren, Colossians 3, not 2 Corinthians. Colossians, Colossians 3, 3 16. 16. Let the word of Christ mm -hmm. dwell in you richly mm -hmm. in all wisdom, uh -huh. teaching and admonishing each other uh -huh. in psalms and hymns uh -huh. and spiritual songs. Good. In grace, uh -huh. singing in your hearts to the Lord. Beautiful. So now, you're seeing what he told the Colossians mm -hmm. and what he told the Ephesians. the Ephesians. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and, and admonishing, admonishing one, one another. another. So now, what you have engaged as thoughts and mm -hmm. understanding, mm -hmm. you are beginning to share it with others. But before you vocalize, mm -hmm. you should have internalized. Mm -hmm. If it hasn't blessed you, it won't bless anybody. If you don't know it, they can't know it. If you haven't touched it, they can't touch it. You can create your own encounters. They can't have it. Until you have experienced it, what you are saying is empty words. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing, singing with, with grace, grace in your heart uh -huh. to the Lord. Now, watch this. 
Colossians if you compare Christ. Colossians 3, <laughs> If he, Papa. in Ephesians, he said, make the melody. melody. He didn't say sing. Mm. He said, sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Lord. Colossians 3. In Ephesians, he said, make him melody, melody in, your, in hearts. your hearts. Until you make it, you can't sing it. The making of the melody in your heart is called grace in your heart. Making melody in your heart is called grace in your heart. Put it together. Cross reference. Colossians 3. Ephesians 3. Put it together. Speak to yourself. Hymns. Psalms. Spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart mm. to the Lord. Mm. When you compare the two, what is the difference between the singing in Colossians and the singing in Ephesians? So, the, in Ephesians 5.19, uh -huh. making melody. Singing and, and making, making melody, melody in, in your heart to the Lord. Yes. Go to Colossians. Then, singing with grace. So, what is, what is missing there? So, singing and making <laughs> melody in your heart is uh -huh. singing with grace. You got it. Singing. Mm. Ephesians. Mm. Colossians. Singing. Mm. Colossians. With grace. Mm -hmm. Ephesians. And making, making melody. melody. In your heart. Mm. The making of melody mm. in your heart mm. is called grace. What is grace? Mm. And in what influence? That expresses itself outwardly. Make melody mm. in your heart. How do you make melody in your heart? What is the greatest melody in your heart? How do you do this? You do it with the Neshama. The sweetest song is breath. If you say it, and let me prove it. <laughs> the sweetest song is breath. Have you ever seen a trumpet before? <laughs> Have you ever seen a saxophone before? How do we make the songs? Do you know that the saxophone is breath in melody? Do you know that? Do you know that a trumpet is breath in melody? Do you know that the flute is breath in melody? And do you know that in the scriptures and in Bible times, the wind instrument was the means by which melody was made. The shofar. The shofar. And even in Revelation. The silver trumpet. We wow. see all of that. Hmm. Wind is melody. When people sing, what do they do? It's just variegated levels of breath. Breath. In external breath. breath. Breath, breath, breath. How do you energize, activate, awaken, connect your Neshema with the Neshema of God? God is breathing. What are you doing? Finally, do you know what? Fifi, Papa. do you know that God does not first listen to prayers? Till it comes with incense as breath. Talk as you may. If there is no incense on your prayer, forget it. Let's go and read it in the revelation of Jesus. Christ. <laughs> God have mercy on us. Too much talking. He said. In the revelation of Jesus, the angel of the Lord, the prayers of the saints. So, and another angel came and stood at the altar, uh -huh. having a golden censer. Uh -huh. There was given unto him much incense uh -huh. that he should offer it uh -huh. with the prayers of all the saints mm -hmm. upon the golden altar, mm -hmm. which was before the throne. Uh -huh. Carry on. So verse four, that's Eight, verse four. Yes, four. And, and the smoke and the smoke of the incense of the incense which came which came with the prayers of the saints uh -huh. ascended up 
before God out of the angel's hand. Now, do you know why it is very important mm. that you must have incense added, fragrance added mm. to the prayer? Because what God Jesus. gets first are not your words. Mm. It is the fragrance. And that goes by avenue of the breath. The breath. God's ears are activated when his nose is activated. <laughs> you like to talk too much. When the spirit of God was in my nostrils. In my nostrils. The breath of God is within me. The spirit of God is in my nostrils. Please, before you talk, think. Is it not true? By even looking at it from principle, way back when you were in the US, where we dealt with asking and thinking, mm -hmm. we looked at the chord of vibration within. That's where we started That's from. That's where we started from. And it's interesting how all of this is linking up into one thing, advancing one thing, and advancing, advancing and, and advancing. building on each other. So, let me do a few practicalities. Next week, we'll carry on. When I begin to deal with the bread of his presence. How to eat the eternal bread. Please listen. When God made man, he came down and breathed into the man. If you have a balloon and you breathe into it, Please, we want to understand the recovery of the breath. the breath. And you breathe. I want everybody. I'm going to ask you to breathe in. You will do something and I'll correct it. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you oh, breathe Jesus. into a balloon, mm. please get this. Remember, I've told you about breathing into a balloon. Now, everybody breathe in. Wherever you are, breathe in. Just breathe in. Breathe. Out. We'll do it three times. Breathe in again. Out. Breathe in the last time. Out. If when you breathed in, <laughs> I remember last week Wednesday. <laughs> so I, it's like I just know what you're doing. <laughs> That's why I keep laughing. Listen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. If when you breathed in, you didn't push out your stomach, but you pushed in your stomach. You couldn't contact the Neshema. Hmm. <laughs> that is why Peter speaks of the recovery of the breath. But we are breathing, so why do we recover hmm. the breath? Hmm. There is a realm of prayer. I come and continue it. Hmm. When you are tuned in, let me do this well so that people can get it. The book of Zephaniah. Let's, let's land well so that people can get rather than the outward mm. practicality. Let's end well. Mm. Zephaniah 3 verse 17. Stupid. We'll read King James and we'll read MSG. Zephaniah 3 Zephaniah. 17 to 18. Read on. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Mm. He will save thee. Mm. He will rejoice over thee with joy. Mm. He will rest in his love. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Come on. 18. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly mm. who are of thee mm. to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Now read it in the message Bible. Your God is present among you. Come on. A strong warrior. Come on. There to save you. Mm. Happy to have you back. Mm. He'll calm you with his love and delight you with his songs. Come on. The accumulated sorrows of your exile will, will dissipate. dissipate. I, your God, mm. will get rid of them for you. You've carried those burdens long enough. Please, listen. Puro Make time off. To have God dissipate accumulated sorrows. To have him get rid of them. Look at how he puts it in the verse 17 of MSG. So that I can go into the practicals very well. 17. Your God is present among, among you. you. A strong warrior. There. To save you. Happy. To have you back. He will. Calm you. 
with his love and delight you with his songs. We will make melody to God mm -hmm. where? In our hearts. Where are his songs? In our hearts. You got it. Now, please listen. Look at the breathing exercise. This is the introduction. Please watch this. Focus here. When you breathe in and you push in back your be belly, that one is a different kind of meditational exercise. This is not the usual meditation you do. And please, if you are going to do this, please make sure that you are in a place that is very stable because anything can happen. But let me just share this. <laughs> I remember when we finished the transmission last week. Yes. We were talking about yes. it. And that's where you taught me the breathing mechanism. Yes. And interestingly, I remember when you were teaching me, I even became scared because <laughs> of what happened to you. Yes. When you were um, rotating the breath positions. And all of a sudden, literally, it was like, Papa... And the bed he was lying on were shaking. So I became scared. And <laughs> after some minutes, he came back. I was like, oh, okay, see, I broke a cry. <laughs> and it was that I was literally scared. Not just his physical body, but he just and everything just started shaking. <laughs> so just to why he says you should be the stable. I'm just body. going to teach it. In the consciousness of my mind, not in the consciousness <laughs> of the divine experience. Else, <laughs> we won't be here. So watch this. When you breathe in, watch my belly. You don't breathe in this way. No. It is a mechanism you would now have to start learning. Probably you've not even taken time off to breathe like that before. But in this kind of breathing, you take in and then you mention the name of Yahweh. Why? The Neshema. You are concentrating on his name. You are set on God. Psalm 63, the verse 1 and the verse 6. I will think upon thee in the night watches. My soul longeth for thee. When I remember thee. When I remember upon thee. Upon my bed. Upon my bed. And meditate and on I thee. Meditate on in thee the night watches. In the night watches. So please listen. This is a meditation on him. Mm. Who is him? Yahweh. Yod, he, vav, he. Yahweh. So in your breathing in. I'm not teaching the utterances. I'm teaching the practicality. Next week we'll do the utterances. Because the moment we start is going to be, I'm saying, untold realms of prayer. People will be carried into dimensions of God's glory. How is this going to happen? You breathe in, you push out your belly. You are going to swell. You are not going to shrink. You begin to imagine that God, his wind, Peter says, the recovery of breath. You will sanitize your environment. Mm. Declare that the breath of the almighty Shani. is in the atmosphere. You will declare the presence of mm. God strong in your space. And when you are done, you will begin to anabzuxis, the recovery of the breath. And when you breathe in, people of God, Watch here, watch here. You will swell. You will push out your belly. You begin to expand your chest and your belly. Please understand that the diaphragm and the heart, they lie close together underneath. The diaphragm and the heart. That one is for doctors to come and explain. So if you want to reach out to the heart, you can go through the diaphragm to the heart. 
and the spirit, the cholia, is in your belly. Right in your belly. So when you take in the breath, push it out. <laughs> Even what I'm saying, I'm just under influence. Now listen. Practically. So this is what you will do. Instead of going like this, you are going to push out and breathe in. You might not get it the first, second, third, because that's not how you've been breathing as man. You are doing it the opposite way. So this is what you do. You see, push out, swell, and release it. Do it again. You need to do it very quick. Else, you can, If you do it slowly, you won't get it. The first stage is breathe in quickly and push out. You push out your belly, you breathe in. Let's do it again. One to release your breath, one to go. Good. You'll get it. If you practice this ten times, now you can take it slowly. Out. Do it again. Out. Do it again. Out. Now, we did not activate any name. If the moment you did it, you are beginning to feel movement under your feet, you did it right. You begin to feel movement under your feet rising up. You begin to feel it. <laughs> Instantly. The more you do it, now your back will be very heavy. You begin to expand as if you are feeling the universe. And your space, you begin to feel that your space crumples and you expand beyond your walls. Sort of boundless. You don't have boundaries. You don't have boundaries. We'll do it for the last time. And we are not activating the name yet. And I'll teach us on how to activate the name. Next week we'll continue. Please, this is prayer. It's a realm of contemplative prayer. It's a realm where we concentrate on the name of God. We remember God. And we are filled as he lavishes us with his love. Zephaniah chapter 3. One, two, go. Out. Do it again. Don't delay. Out. Now for the last time, push out your belly strong. Push it out and breathe in instantly. Go. Out. Now we are going to do it slowly. Push out your belly slowly and breathe in. Out. Breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. And swell. Swell. One, two, go. Out. Through your mouth. Take it again through your nose. Out. Do it again through your nose. Out. Finally, this is what we are going to do. The name of the Lord means the breathing one. Yahweh. It means the breathing one. God's name, Yahweh, means the breathing one. When you take in the breath and you are releasing the breath, you mention his name. And you do it in the consciousness that he is within you. And that the nefesh lying underneath you is beginning to be awakened. Please, you know that when you do this, number one, your intelligence will shoot up. Your understanding in life will shoot up. In the word of God will shoot up. You begin to operate on a frequency people will wonder. It opens up your understanding. 
it doesn't matter how bad you are. You will no longer you will know that this is not your mind. Jesus. Your intelligence it, it shoots up. There is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty. It gives him understanding. The Neshemiah of the Almighty. It gives him understanding. Activate. Yahweh. Do it again. Activate. Out. Do it again. Out. Do it slowly now. Out. Do it for the last time. Hold it some more. Out. Settle. Two things happens to you when you do this. This is the fastest way to open your third eye. It gives you understanding. This is the fastest way to open your spiritual eyes. It gives you understanding. Makes you see beyond. What is understanding? <laughs> he, he opened the understanding. So the understanding can be shut and the understanding can be opened. Understanding means to see into a matter. To have he, discernment. To have discernment. To perceive. To perceive. To understand. Uh -huh. To know. To know. To distinguish. Good. To consider. Yes. To be prudent. Good. To regard. Good. To have intelligence. Good. I told you. To be cunning. Yes. To perceive. I've yes. That already. To cause. Yes. To make to. Yes. To get. Yes. To have. Yes. To deal wisely. Yes. To view. Yes. To separate mentally. When you do this, oh, are the these things are the things that happens to you. Oh, Jesus. You are open. So the Bible said, Jesus, he opened the understanding. Your understanding is to be opened. Make time off. Exercise yourself in God. Walk in realms of prayer you have never walked in. Activate your neshama. For most of us, the neshama has been lying down for the past over 20 years untouched. God have mercy. Walking with the Holy Spirit in the experience of of the gift of God, but never getting deep into the recesses of the contact of your neshema with the neshema of God. If you feel the sensation under your feet is real, if you realize you were swelling, it is real. And for most of you, please get this. Because it's your first time, you begin to have certain pain in your forehead because your third eye has calcified it will decalcify just keep doing it just keep doing it just keep doing it start praying like this don't come asking for things just come thinking on his name and next week i'll show us how to use this for deliverance how to use this to cast out devils how to use this to move mountains I believe you've been blessed, mm -hmm. and I believe your life is never the same again. Please watch this series over, over and over. over and over again. Make your notes. Understand that we are in the realm where we are touching on your untold dimensions of prayer. Fifi, what is going on? Talk to Papa, me. Um, very interesting comment. A number of questions, but because of the time, we'll take those questions later. But yes. Papa, God bless you. God Amen. bless you. I'm just summing up quickly. People talking about the impact this has had on them. God's ears are activated when his nose is activated. Yes. He's God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are blessed. 
this was too deep. I feel like exploding. Yes, 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 yes. Then yes, he says, yes, Papa, yes. I was just praying for understanding before I went to sleep. <laughs> Papa, you are a spirit. <laughs> God bless you immensely. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. But as for the blessings here, it's, it just abounds. And it's just interesting. But let me just ask this question. It's, okay. It's a quick to sum up. Um, two in one. Because yes. so now, is it that you should endeavor? to normalize your normal breathing pattern such that in the breathe in your belly comes out and in the breath out i ask this because for spiritual exercise okay so normally you can breathe in oh you are not now you're human being you are humankind breathe like okay. everybody okay breathe like everybody but reverse then okay. then your other being will come forward okay. and your usual being will step back because right after last wednesday when it was me in a crap i saw a newborn baby fresh like Almost a month. And it just struck me to observe how the, the baby was breathing. Pattern. And Papa, when the baby breathes in, mm -hmm. the belly comes out. Yes. So my question is Well, it is when we are falling, Bonnie, oh Bonnie, Bonnie, I say Bibia. Now we say Bibia. I say who breathing basa basa. Wow. When you watch a newborn baby breathe, you will see that yes. thing. The belly comes out yes. when the baby breathes in. Yes. And so yes. I was like, ah. Why is it that mine is not like this? <laughs> <laughs> Sending your offerings right mm. away. I stretch forth my hand and I pray for you Jesus. in the name of Jesus. That as you mm. contact this grace with the transformation it brings, mm. constantly growing by the word of God, your seeds on this platform is not a waste. You are receiving corresponding blessings in Jesus' precious name. I call it that. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll see you same time next week. Please make time and watch this over and over again. We are walking in realms of the Neshama of God. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Bye. To carry our spiritual activity, testimonies are inevitable. The ball of anointing that just hits this room right now by those statements that are made and what I saw in the spirit something just broke and I saw angels stepping into the rooms of people You need to understand that spiritual activity is born out of understanding. And when you use understanding to carry out spiritual activity, testimonies are inevitable.